we've started our first agent and registered and queried a service on that agent. Additionally, we've configured Console Connect to automatically authorize and encrypt connections between services. This showed how easy it is to use Console, but didn't show how this could be extended to a scalable, production-grade service mesh infrastructure. In this step, we'll create our first real cluster with multiple members. When a console agent is started, it begins without knowledge of any other node. It is an isolated cluster of one. To learn about other cluster members, the agent must join an existing cluster. To join an existing cluster, it only needs to know about a single existing member, a server, or a non-server agent. After it joins, the agent will gossip with this member and quickly discover the other members in the cluster. A console agent can join any other agent, not just agents in server mode. To simulate a more realistic cluster, we will start a two-node cluster via Vagrant. The Vagrant file we will be using can be found in the demo section of the console repo. We first boot our two nodes with Vagrant up. Once the systems are available, we can SSH into them to begin configuration of our cluster. We start by logging into the first node with Vagrant SSH N1. In our previous examples, we use the dash dev flag to quickly set up a development server. However, this is not sufficient for use in a clustered environment. We will omit the dash dev flag from here on and instead specify our clustering flags as outlined below. Each node in a cluster must have a unique name. By default, console uses the host name of the machine, but we'll manually override it using the dash node command line option. We will also specify a bind address. This is the address that console listens on and it must be accessible by all other nodes in the cluster. While a bind address is not strictly necessary, it's always best to provide one. Console will by default attempt to listen on all IPv4 interfaces on a system, but will fail to start with an error if multiple private IPs are found. Since production servers often have multiple interfaces, specifying a bind address assures you that you will never bind console to the wrong interface. The first node will act as our sole server in the cluster, and we will indicate this with the server switch. The bootstrap expect flag hints to the console server the number of additional server nodes we are expecting to join. The purpose of this flag is to delay the bootstrapping of the replicated log until the expected number of servers have successfully joined. You can read more about this in the bootstrapping guide. We've included the enable script checks flag set to true in order to enable health checks that can execute external scripts. This will be used in examples later. For production use, you'd want to configure ACLs in conjunction with this to control the ability to register arbitrary scripts. Finally, we add the configured flag, marking where service and check definitions can be found. Altogether, these settings yield a console agent command like this. Now in another terminal, we will connect to the second node, Vagrant SSH N2. This time we set the bind address to match the IP of the second node as specified in the Vagrant file and the node name to be Agent2. Since this node will not be a console server, we don't provide a server switch. Altogether, these settings yield a console agent command like this. At this point, you have two console agents running, one server and one client. 
The two consul agents still don't know anything about each other and are part of their own single node clusters. You can verify this by running console members against each agent and noting that only one member is visible to each agent. Now we'll tell the first agent to join the second agent by running the following commands in a new terminal. Vagrant SSH N1 Console join IP address you should see some log output in each of the agent logs. If you read carefully, you'll see that they receive join information. If you run console members against each agent, you'll see that both agents now know about each other. Remember, to join a cluster, a console agent only needs to learn about one existing member. After joining the cluster, the agents gossip with each other to propagate full membership information. Ideally, whenever a new node is brought up in your data center, it should automatically join the console cluster without human intervention. Console facilitates auto-join by enabling the auto-discovery of instances in AWS, Google Cloud, or Azure with a given tag and key value. To use the integration, add the retry join EC2, retry join GC2, or the retry join Azure nested object to your console configuration file. This will allow a new node to join the cluster without any hard-coded configuration. Alternately, you can join a cluster at startup using the join flag or start join setting with hard-coded address of other known console agents. Just like querying services, console has an API for querying the nodes themselves. You can do this via the DNS or HTTP API. For the DNS API, the structure of the names is name.node.console or name.node.datacenter.console. If the data center is omitted, console will only search the local data center. For example, from agent one, we can query for the address of the node agent two. The ability to look up nodes in addition to services is incredibly useful for system administration tasks. For example, knowing the address of the node to SSH into is as easy as making the node a part of the console cluster and querying it. To leave the cluster, you can either gracefully quit an agent using Control C or force kill one of the agents. Gracefully leaving allows the node to transition into the left state. Otherwise, other nodes will detect it as having failed. The difference is covered in more detail in the documentation. We now have a multi-node console cluster up and running. Let's make our services more robust by giving them health checks.